Nikosi Johnson was a young boy who was born to non-landlord Daphne Nikosi on February 4, 1989 in Johannesburg, Africa, whose original name was Zolani Nikosi. Zolani Nikosi never knew who his father was as a result of his father leaving him at a young age. When Zolani Nikosi was born to Nalmela Nikosi, she quickly noticed that he was much different than many other normal kids. Zolani Nikosi also faced many problems as an infant, such as difficulty breathing and trouble drinking. So at one point in time, when Nalmela Nikosi wasn't feeling well, she went to her doctor where she would then be informed that she was HIV positive and had unknowingly passed it to her son, Zolani Nikosi, before he was even born. So Lanny Nikosi, however, was not different from many other babies and kids from where he lived, as he found himself as one of the 70,000 children born HIV positive in South Africa yearly. But this was not enough to stop him. So Lanny Nikosi managed to live past his second birthday, which was rare during this time for HIV positive infants. But soon, however, HIV began to take its toll on non Lanla Nikosi. So Nan Lanla and Zolani Nikosi were both admitted to an HIV and AIDS care center in Johannesburg. This was when a volunteer worker named Gail Johnson saw the sick Zolani Nikosi and his very ill mother. Gail Johnson said about Zolani Nikosi at the AIDS care center, It was a very personal and mutual understanding. I had a graphic encounter with an AIDS death close to my family, and I wanted to do something more than just talk about it. And there was Nikosi. All I had to do was reach out to him. So since non Lanla's condition was gradually starting to get worse, she quickly agreed for Gail Johnson to become Zolani Nikosi's foster mother. Soon after this event took place, the care center was forced to shut down since the center had no funds to continue to stand on its own. So Gail Johnson, who would take Zolani Nikosi home on the weekends, was now forced to take Nikosi home permanently once the care center closed. From there, Gail Johnson changed his name from Zolani Nikosi to Nikosi Johnson. Nikosi Johnson had to follow certain rules when he was with Gail Johnson at home since he had HIV. For instance, HIV and AIDS can be spread through blood-to-blood -blood contact, so if Nikosi Johnson had scraped or cut himself and he bled, he would have to make sure that he would cover his wound and ask an adult to put plaster around his wound to stop the blood from flowing anywhere else. He would also need an adult to help clean up his blood so that no one could become contaminated with HIV. So as time went on, one day in 1997, Nikosi Johnson was informed by Gail Johnson that non-Lanla Daphne Nikosi, his biological mother, passed away while on holiday in Newcastle. Nikosi Johnson stated that once Gail Johnson almost immediately informed him that his mom died because of an HIV-related illness, he had instantly burst into many tears. Also in 1997, Gail Johnson decided to enroll Nikosi Johnson in a school whom was 8 years old at the time. The school they were looking at to enroll Nikosi Johnson in was a school located in Johannesburg called Mel Park Primary. So when Gail Johnson went to the school to fill out Nikosi Johnson's admission form, a question stated, does your child suffer from anything? Gail Johnson replied with the answer to AIDS. She then submitted the admission form and called the school, which they informed her by saying they will call her back. The school then had a meeting on the topic of if Nikosi Johnson should join the school or not. From the people in the meeting, 50% of the teachers and parents had the answer yes, and 50% of the people at the meeting said no, which meant that Nikosi Johnson was not allowed to attend that school. Gail Johnson denied this and declared her case by taking it to the streets. She went public with the case and was proven correct. Nikosi Johnson was able to attend Mel Park Primary. Nikosi then stated regarding this matter, the AIDS workshops were done at the school for parents and teachers to teach them not to be scared of a child with AIDS. I'm very proud to say that there is now a policy for all HIV infected children to be allowed to go into schools and not be discriminated against. This movement was soon going to be a starting point for Nikosi Johnson to become a national figure and HIV activist to destigmatize AIDS and HIV. On July 9, 2000, Nikosi Johnson's biggest moment happened where he would confront 10,000 delegates at the 13th International AIDS Conference in Durban on the matter of treating people with HIV and AIDS as normal human beings. 
Worldwide, more than 60 million people watched and listened to his speech. In a part of the speech, he had stated, Because I was separated from my mother at an early age, because we were both HIV positive, my mommy Gail and I have always wanted to start a care center for HIV and AIDS mothers and their children. I am very happy and proud to say that the first Nicosi's Haven was opened last year, and we look after 10 mommies and 15 children. My mommy Gail and I want to open five Nicosi's Havens by the end of next year because I want more infected mothers to stay together with their children. They mustn't be separated from their children so they can be together and live longer with the love that they need. When I grow up, I want to lecture to more and more people about AIDS. And if Mommy Gail will let me, around the whole country, I want people to understand about AIDS, to be careful and respect AIDS. You can't get AIDS if you touch, hug, kiss, hold hands with someone who is infected. Care for us and accept us. We are all human beings. We are normal, we have hands, we have feet, we can walk, we can talk. We have needs just like everyone else. Don't be afraid of us, we are all the same. The speech that he gave to the world was so inspiring and life-changing that in October 2000, he was to give the same speech at another AIDS conference in Atlanta, Georgia. Millions of people were inspired and surprised by his moving words. Nikosi Johnson was able to change millions of people's views on HIV and AIDS and was considered a hero to the world. However, when Nikosi Johnson returned to Johannesburg from America after giving a speech there, he was not feeling too well. Nikosi Johnson had a quiet and dull Christmas in which he then collapsed. All of this was caused by brain damage, which he was found diagnosed with. He also started to experience many serious and common symptoms such as seizures. He even became semi-comatose, but despite all that, he was still fighting for HIV rights. Gail Johnson, for one, was very proud and inspired by him. Nikosi Johnson slowly weakened after time and was too weak to get up at one point in time. And then Nikosi Johnson, a brave soul, stopped breathing at 5.40 a.m. on Friday, June 1, 2001, which would define him as the longest surviving child born HIV positive at the time of his death. His disease struck hard, and millions in South Africa watched and waited and prayed. We are all the same, he often said. He was wrong. Nkosi was different. An amazing kid. Gail Johnson and millions of other people all around the world were devastated when Nikosi Johnson passed away. Nikosi Johnson received a hero's burial on his funeral with thousands of mourners who were touched by his powerful actions and meaningful words. Nikosi Johnson might not be living in this world anymore but his legacy is still alive to this day. After Nikosi Johnson passed away, Gail Johnson continued to fight against the discrimination of people who have HIV and AIDS. Nikosi Johnson also developed AIDS awareness throughout the world before he passed away. In 2005, Nikosi Johnson was able to win the Children's Peace Prize even long after his death. Also, the organization Kids Rights continues to support Nikosi's Haven, which is a non-governmental organization that provides a safe place for kids and mothers with HIV and AIDS to live together and be provided for their necessities, such as education, housing, good nutrition, health care, and more. Nikosi's Haven yearly provides for over 25 mothers and 100 children. Nikosi Johnson was not only a hero to millions of people with HIV and AIDS, but he was also able to break the barrier of ignorance from millions of people's views on HIV and AIDS. And he is known as an icon to the world for his lasting actions on the topic of AIDS and HIV.